Hello, you incredible child of God. Welcome to Bible Bedtime, Season 5, Episode 217. I'm your host, Dana, and in this podcast, I read a full chapter of the Bible in a way intended to help you sleep in heavenly peace. Now, since this is the fifth season, it means we'll be reading through the fifth book of the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, and the fifth book of the New Testament, Acts. And as I've done in previous seasons, I will start with the Old Testament and read chapter by chapter, then move on to the New. In each episode, after reading the chapter, I read Psalm 23 and then finish with the Lord's Prayer. If you would like to support this ad-free podcast with a love offering, we are on Venmo. Just enter at Bible Bedtime or search for Bible Bedtime Podcast. All of the links are in the show description. You know, even a a gift of a dollar helps me with the costs of producing the show. And it blesses me tremendously. But there's no expectation that you do this. Now, if you'd like to reach out to me or the Bible Bedtime community, you can send an email to Bible Bedtime Podcast at gmail.com or join our Facebook group. I would love to hear from you. Another way that you can bless me is by taking a moment to rate and or review Bible Bedtime on your podcast app. If you're somebody who's already done that, thank you so much. Leaving a review and a rating It helps others find the podcast and determine if it's something that they are interested in. It also helps me get your feedback on what you like or you don't like. So if you are listening on an app that allows you to give ratings and reviews, please do that. Thanks. Now, you have had all day long to accomplish the things that you wanted to accomplish. Maybe it was work. Maybe it was school or time with family. Maybe you had a delightful day of relaxing and playing and doing the things that you love to do. Or maybe you had a day where you really didn't have a moment to yourself at all. And I understand no matter where you are, you are not alone. We have all experienced the days that you've had today, the good, the bad, the busy, the calm, the boring, the very, very difficult. But no matter what your day held for you, now is the time for you to end it and let the day go. After you fall asleep, today will be folded into a memory. And you will get to start fresh tomorrow morning. Now the best way to be fresh in the morning and be your best and do the things that God has planned for you tomorrow because you know there is a plan for you tomorrow. There is a plan for what you will do. And it will go to fulfill the greater plan, the plan that affects the entire universe throughout eternity. 
And the best way to prepare for that is to get a good night's sleep. And I am so honored that you invited me along to end your day. Now, it's time to settle in to your bed and make sure any distractions are put away, that the lights are just right. If you can control the temperature of the room, making sure the the temperature is just right. And snuggling yourself into your favorite sleeping position and then just allowing your body to relax. I don't know if you ever have this happen, but I had it happen last night where I woke up after sleeping a few hours and I lay there trying to fall back asleep. Sometimes it's tough. If that happens, it's okay. Because it does happen. Maybe you would like to listen to another episode of Bible Bedtime or some music. Or get up and drink something warm and see if that helps you. But the best thing to do is just accept that you will fall asleep again when you are ready. And by the same token, if you get to the end of Bible bedtime and you're still awake, that happens too. And it's okay. Again, you can listen to another episode or re-listen to this episode until you fall asleep. Now, now that you're comfortable and you're calm and you're at peace with yourself, I'll ask that you take an inventory of your body. Note the places that seem tense or where you might be feeling some pain or discomfort. And then I want you to imagine that there is a warmth that settles over your body. It's not an uncomfortable warmth. It's the perfect temperature of warmth. And it eases those muscles. And it soaks into those areas of discomfort, pain, and releases all of that for you. So that you are left limp, like a rag, and heavy as your muscles relax. And now, if you can, you can join me taking three deep breaths. One. Two. And three. Very good. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Then we turned back and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Seir. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. Give the people these 
orders. You are about to pass through the territory of your brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you, but be very careful. Do not provoke them to war, for I will not give you any of their land, not even enough to put your foot on. I have given Esau the hill country of Seir as his own. You are to pay them in silver for the food you eat and the water you drink. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast desert. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. So we went on past our brothers, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. We turned from the Arabah Road, which comes up from Elath and Isaiah Geber, and traveled along the desert road of Moab. And the Lord said to me, Do not harass the Moabites or provoke them to war. For I will not give you any part of their land. I have given our to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emites used to live there, a people strong and numerous and as tall as the Anakites. Like the Anakites, they too were considered Rephates. But the Moabites called them Emites. Horites used to live in Seir, but the descendants of Esau drove them out. They destroyed the Horites from before them and settled in their place just as Israel did in the land the Lord gave them as their possession. And the Lord said, Now get up and cross the Zerad Valley. So we crossed the valley. Thirty-eight years passed from the time we left Kadesh Barnea until we crossed the Zerad Valley. By then, that entire generation of fighting men had perished from the camp as the Lord had sworn to them. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminated them from the camp. Now, when the last of these fighting men among the people had died, the Lord said to me, Today you are to pass by the region of Moab at Ar. 
when you come to the Ammonites, do not harass them or provoke them to war, for I will not give you possession of any land belonging to the Ammonites. I have given it as a possession to the descendants of Lot. That too was considered a land of the Rephaites, who used to live there, but the Ammonites called them Zemzumites. They were people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites who drove them out and settled in their place. The Lord had done the same for the descendants of Esau, who lived in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They drove them out and have lived in their place to this day. And as for the Avites who lived in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtarites coming out of Kamphtor destroyed them and settled in their place. Set out now and cross the Arnon Gorge. See, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon and his country. Begin to take possession of it and engage him in battle. This very day, I will begin to put the terror and fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. From the desert of Kedimoth, I sent messengers to Sihon, king of Heshbon, offering peace and saying, let us pass through your country. We will stay on the main road. We will not turn aside to the right or to the left. Sell us food to eat and water to drink for their price in silver. Only let us pass through on foot as the descendants of Esau who live in Seir and the Moabites who live in Ar did for us until we cross the Jordan into the land the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, refused to let us pass through. For the Lord your God had made his spirit stubborn and his heart obstinate in order to give him into your hands as he has done now. The Lord said to me, See, I have begun to deliver Sion and his country over to you. Now begin to conquer and possess his land. When Sion and all his army came out to meet us in battle at Jehaz. 
the Lord our God delivered him over to us, and we struck him down together with his sons and his whole army. At that time, we took all his towns and completely destroyed them, men, women, and children. We left no survivors, but the livestock and the plunder from the towns we had captured, we carried off for ourselves. From a rower on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the gorge, even as far as Gilead, not one town was too strong for us. The Lord our God gave us all of them. But in accordance with the command of the Lord our God, you did not encroach on any of the land of the Ammonites, neither the land along the course of the Jabok, nor that around the towns in the hills. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff may comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, 